Mike. Good morning, Tawanda. Today is Thursday, March 7th, 2019. Attention NHS members, we will meet today right after school in the Upper Media Center. The deadline for senior pictures is past due. See Mr. Zimmerman in room 301 if you have any questions or problems. Attention Setting Stone, we will not meet on Monday, March 11th. Instead, we will meet again as a whole group on Monday, March 18th. Please plan on attending on the 18th to begin planning out the magazine. Attention any students interested in taking one of the IT classes next year. If you are interested in getting CCP credit through the University of Cincinnati, you must apply by this Friday, March 8th. See Mrs. Stark if you have any questions. YIT is sponsoring Dodge and Dance on Friday, March 15th. Make sure you get a team together or come to cheer on the dodgeball teams and then stay for a free food and a great sock hop. There is no cost for either event. Birthdays for today, Ainsley Clark, Zaid Beckington, and Sarah Ferdinand turn 17, and Kira Henson and Nathan Berter turn 18. And now for What's the Team, Patty G. Tigerland is the story of a black high school's triumph in inner city Columbus during the turbulent civil rights movement. In the year 1969, the East High Tigers won both the state basketball and baseball championships despite a severe economic disadvantage. But their African American sports teams triumphed over the wealthy white schools during the tournaments. I sat down with the book's author Will Hagen on Tuesday to talk about his story of triumph and Tigerland's place in the 21st century. The full interview is 12 minutes long, so if there's not enough time in class today, you don't have to watch all of it. If there's any part of the interview you should catch, it would be the last three minutes when Hagen gives advice to today's young students. We'll post the full interview on our YouTube channel after today's news, and that's a broadcast on this Thursday. I'm Patrick Geshin. My conversation now with Will Haygood. So, Mr. Haygood, thank you so much for taking the time with us today. Sure. Good to be here. You've just got to Talawanda, obviously. What do you think of our school so far? Uh, you know, it's wonderful. You know, it, it, you know, it's very, very nice to come in and, you know, and just feel the excitement around uh, literature and around uh, uh, specifically this book, you know. And I could tell that the students had uh, read the book very closely and, um, and uh, had been intrigued with the book uh, and some of the characters in the book, you know, and so it really made me feel uh, extraordinarily proud of the school and the teachers and, and the lessons that they seem to uh, have gleaned from the book. Yeah. Tigerland was just recently released. Are you surprised by how quickly it's become so acclaimed? Um, you know, what's interesting uh, when the book first came out, I had like uh, eight cities set up on my book tour, uh, you know, but then sports and social activism and race and, and with the NFL controversy of kneeling uh, for social justice, all of that um, just exploded in the news mm -hmm. and I ended up getting like 35 more uh, uh, speaking engagements and so I've been traveling all around the country um, talking to colleges and high schools and junior high schools and civic groups actually after I leave Oxford I go back to Washington DC and then I go to Iowa to talk about the book and then I'm going down to Florida to talk about the book and so it really um, uh, has been an opportune time to talk about uh, some of these really important issues in this country and about what these uh, young men achieved uh, back in 1968-1969. 
I know you talked about it a little bit in your talk, but just for the rest of the student body, describe the research you did in terms of finding the nitty-gritty details in some of the games and just getting all the information from the different people involved. How did you do that? Yeah, you know, as a historian, that's the fun part for me to go around and find people to talk to. The subject matters of some of my previous books, you know, they've been figures, figures, figures like Sammy Davis Jr. Uh, and Adam Clayton Powell and Thurgood Marshall, the Supreme Court Justice, uh, uh, and Sugar Ray Robinson, who's the prize fighter, who's a boxer back in the 1940s and 1950s. They had all passed away by the time I started working working on books about their lives but these athletes were still uh, thank goodness with us and so I had uh, a very wonderful opportunity to go sit in their living rooms with them uh, to talk about you know that school year how difficult it was you know how joyful it felt to win uh, two state championships. Three of three of the athletes played on both teams, and I mean, and so uh, uh, what a tribute to to them, uh, you know, to to be a member of two uh, state championship teams, um, you know, and so you know, it took four and a half years of research and traveling and writing uh, but it was fun and you know you hope you know that nice things happen like you know maybe you'll find somebody and they'll have a scrapbook from that year and I was talking to the baseball coach and he went down his basement and came back up with the entire record book from the 19 69 baseball season and that saved me months of library research that was just astonishing that he had kept it as if he was waiting on somebody to come knock on their door mm -hmm. 50 years later you know and there I was yeah that's cool what do you want readers to take away from Tigerland uh, that it really is a magical story. I mean, you know, and that there's always, you know, uh, happiness in rooting for the underdog when the underdog wins. You know, and I think also it is a genuine testament to the spirit of this country. I mean, these were athletes uh, who were black and but they had um, whites and black um, boosters uh, who were supporters uh, who rooted for them uh, in a very hard time in this country's history they helped with the healing in that city and I think it's a wonderful uh, lesson uh, for us all during my travels around the country I've been very touched uh, with uh, how many high school students would tell me that they have connected specifically with Roy Hickman or Larry Walker or Ed Ratliff uh, or Kenny Mizell for whatever reason there's something in their lives that sort of point them to something in that athlete's life uh, that gives them a little extra oomph in their day and whenever I tell the athletes these stories about you know which which state I've recently been to or which which city I've recently been to and which you know, students in certain high schools have specifically mentioned them. They get the widest smile on their face. 
you know, just like it's hard to believe uh, for them that what they accomplished 50 years ago uh, still has impact. A lot of people in the school are studying your work for your writer's craft um, and analyzing that, and including me too. So would you be able to describe personally your own writer's craft? Yeah, How you know, you my think? writer's craft, I think, tends, tends, tends to lean toward the lyrical. Okay. I'm not always successful. Uh, I want people, uh, you know, to read a story of mine, you know, if they didn't know it was written by me, and I'd like them to say, that sounds like a Will Haygood story. Uh, you know, it's, yeah. you know, it's a writing style that I worked on for years and years and years. And I think for the most part, my writing style doesn't come, uh, uh, you know, um, it comes more from the heart and the soul, you know. I think, you know, the feeling inside of me as a human being is what led me to find in this White House butler who was living in Washington, D.C., and worked uh, for eight presidents, and nobody had, you know, even thought to go out and find him and to tell his story. And that story had been there for many, many, many years, you know, but it was, I think, just the way I'm wired, you know, and that points me to tell certain kind of stories, and I think it's the same reason that I wanted to tell this story uh, in this book, Tigerland. How did your life as a journalist help you write this book, Tigerland? You know, uh, deadlines. I'm used to deadlines. I'll run into somebody, you know, who I met at, at some book signing for my previous book, mm -hmm. and I'll run into them at this book, you know, and I spend four years about on each book, and they'll say, uh, hey, uh, 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 hi, Mr. Hager, uh, I'm still working on that book that I told you about last time. And my thinking is, you know, well, like, you know, get with it, you know, golly, you know, here I'm like on my eighth book now, you know, stop talking about it and just do it. So I think in newspapers, you have deadlines. You, you can't be covering a flood and then call into your editor and say, oh, I'm having a bad day. Uh, the prose is just not flowing. No, that doesn't work on a newspaper. You got to get the story in. And so that, that focus on deadlines has helped me with my books. That is the number one crucial, crucial thing. Writer's block doesn't exist for me. You know, it's a crazy concept. Nope, I can't afford to have writer's block. I'm on a deadline. I got to get this in. Lastly, your advice to young writers, journalists who are looking to aspire to be someone like you. Mm -hmm. You know, it helps, I think, uh, it helps to travel. Mm -hmm. You know, that's been very important in my life. And one of the things that um, I think inspired me more than anything else is I'm a big reader. You know, fiction, non-fiction, uh, you know, history, you know, you know, books written about the 19th century and the 20th century, uh, you, you know, I read in the writers whose work I admire, you know, good writers, you know, and a lot of writers uh, who have transitioned into books started in journalism. Hemingway was a journalist, James Baldwin was a journalist, you know, and so, you know, if I look at their work and then I'll see in the back of the book it says, 
such and such, you know, uh, Hemingway was a journalist on the Kansas City Star newspaper for years. And, you know, wow, I remember I applied to the Kansas City Star. I tried to get an entry level job because of Hemingway. I didn't get the job at the Kansas City Star. And whenever I run into an editor at the Kansas City Star, I like to remind them of that. But life has worked out okay. Yeah. <laughs>